Welcome everyone to Unscripted Coding. Today we are going to work on a foundational project for many other tools that you might build that are AI related. Um, very simply, we are trying to extract text from documents, from files, but also from web pages. If you think about AI today, sure, you can have chat GPT start chatting with you. Uh, and, and if you have certain AI LLMs, I am thinking chat GPT specifically, but also find perplexity, etc. Uh, they may be able to connect to the internet to search some of these documents. Um, it's getting really good because the context is getting longer and longer. You could throw uh, even a couple of whole textbooks and start asking questions. But most of us don't have that in text files. Most of us have these books, have these websites, our PDFs, Word files, HTML files, whatever. And we want it inserted into the AI uh, tool. So we want to extract all the text from the PDF uh, throw it into the tool and start asking questions about it. Now, there are multiple ways of doing this, but uh, today what I wanted to do is build a very, very simple version. And uh, this time I am cheating a little bit because I have uh, written some of the code already, uh, not all of it, but some of it already. So uh, for those of you who don't recognize this, uh, we are using Fast API. I have done a number of videos in the past with it already. Uh, what you want to do is probably start with those videos, but if you do already know uh, about Fast API, uh, I think this is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it's a very simple way to get an API running uh, on Azure Functions, for example, um, but you could do this plain Python script as well, and you could obviously use other languages and other packages. Uh, first of all, what we did was we wrote a bit of code that is URL to text. Um, what we've done is use a basic request. So you send a request to the web page, and we have to do this through a an API. We have to do this server based. You cannot do it client side, uh, at least for a web page because uh, of cores. And so if you're thinking over engineering, uh, a lot of sites have security so that they don't allow other websites to access their data directly through JavaScript. And so what I did was throw this up in um, Python. Uh, very simply, we have a bunch of headers to make sure that it's not, you know, they don't know that it's just a Python script. I made it seem like, you know, we're using a desktop web browser, that uh, we are like a human, basically. Uh, what we're going to do is try and connect. And so we'll use requests, get the URL, um, and then use beautiful soup to kind of get to... Uh, to get the text out of it. So when you use requests, you're going to have all of the HTML code. So you're going to have like tag, bold, tag, strong, and then you have your text in between, and then tag, next paragraph, blah, blah, blah. Uh, what this is going to do is strip out all of the P's, the H1's, the uh, header, body, all of those tags to actually get the text of the web page. Now, this is highly simplified. What if you want to get something with a lot of images or video content? Skipping all of that, I'm assuming we want text. And so what we're doing is we're, we're removing the header, the footer, and then at the end, we're going to just get the text out of all of them and just return the text. Got a couple of exceptions to capture in case we don't, we can't connect or we can't parse through it. That one is an easy one. Uh, I, I think anyone who's used Python for a little bit should probably have seen requests and probably have seen beautiful soup already. The more fun one is uh, document intelligence. And this was a web page that uh, we started off with right here. 
Now, one way you could do this is you could parse every type of file. If you get a .txt file, that's great. But if you get a Word uh, document, then you might want to open up the XML and try and figure out the text. If you get a PDF file, you know, depending on what type of PDF, you might want to OCR and recognize the text in the images, or you might get a nicely formatted piece of text, extract all of that out. Uh, you could do all that manually, and I think there are libraries and many different libraries that do that, and some meta libraries that combine these together. But I have found that Microsoft Azure uh, is probably the best, quickest, easiest way to do this because we just send whatever file we want to them. And this could be Word, PDF, but it could be JPEG, PNGs, all sorts of things, and it's going to extract the text out for us. Um, in general, I have found that works pretty well. It's by no means perfect, but it saves so, so much time. And the pricing isn't uh, ridiculous either. It has a pretty generous free tier. As a pretty generous free tier of 500 pages a month, and then, uh, you know, $1.50 for every thousand pages. It's not, it's not uh, too terrible. Sorry, $1.50 just to read it, and then there's a couple uh, charges depending on what we want to do. Um, not ridiculous in my opinion, and for my purposes, way easier to offload it to Azure. Um, I didn't want to do this live because I have built this before. Um, you spin it up in your Azure portal, and then you follow the code in, um, in their samples. The problem I keep running into is FastAPI uses upload file. Uh, you want to make sure it matches something similar to this. Um, you're going to pass it to Document Intelligence Client. Because they recently changed the name, a lot of their documentation doesn't reflect the right uh, name or calls, so it's kind of frustrating. Uh, and the other thing is uh, something that doesn't show up that I have to keep remembering is that you want to make sure your content type is uh, given to them. So uh, if you have a JPEG file, you want to tell them it's a JPEG. If it's a PDF, you want to tell them it's a PDF. I don't know why it doesn't show up in their documentation and it just... I hit into a brick wall every time because of my poor memory. Anyways, uh, that is the major kind of tip. The other thing is in your requirements, you want to put in Python multi-part so that you can get those upload files from FastAPI. The rest of it should be fairly straightforward. Okay, so um, this code, you could just copy it off the screen. I'll zoom in a little bit and scroll down here. Uh, obviously, your endpoint and key will be very different. Um, sorry about that, I had to cut out because I showed the key, but your endpoint and key will obviously be different to match whatever uh, document intelligence you spin up, uh, but the rest should be fairly similar. Now I'm going to copy and paste this, and the next thing I'm going to do is ask Claude, trusty AI file, uh, just to try and build a single page web app for this. Um, I have a fast API, API uh, endpoint that I want to build this SPA. Uh, there are two uh, triggers that allow me to turn HTML into text and uh, upload files, which will also turn it to text. Can you create two inputs to allow for that, and a button that will send, send it out, and finally an area to paste the text to. 
uh, here is the fast API code for reference. Okay, and so we're gonna let Claude to do its thing. Uh, we can definitely do multiple steps here. I am trying to do a very foundational approach so that all we're doing with this web app is uh, give you uh, two places to put things. Um, I realize here that I don't have the endpoint, so, um, well, uh, that's all right. Let's just go HTTPS, oops, google.com, and the idea is we'll analyze the URL. Uh, fail to fetch, that shouldn't surprise me because uh, we don't actually, we didn't actually give them the the full URL. So this will need to go uh, different places. I also think, oh, actually, no, this is, this looks okay. Form data. See, this is, this is perfect. Um, this code will almost certainly work. All it's doing is taking form data and passing it over and it already sees it. Um, but what I wanted to say is that you need to build these APIs. Um, and then you need something basic to test this. The next step after this single page web app is we are going to, uh, we could start doing additional things. So uh, once you upload a file, for example, uh, you could ask it to summarize it. So this could be upload any PDF, whether it's a scan or a well-formatted uh, PDF file, and then it will always summarize a text. Or you could have it built into a chatbot. You could do it for different ways. Now, for me, one of the things I keep seeing is uh, I'm, you know, I want to do a bunch of research with perplexity. Uh, it comes out with uh, a couple great results, but I also have done some research and found a couple good URLs that perplexity seemingly never finds. And so I want to then just enter it into this app, copy the text from the URL, and throw it into the chat with perplexity and say, oh, uh, also I found this source that says that, can you add it to your analysis? Um, and that's getting better and better and better. Like these LLMs are getting really, really good. But what I've found is that even Perplexity Pro uh, hasn't been great for research. Uh, it's a great starting point, but for, uh, for example, legal research I'm doing, um, uh, what we want to do is, uh, is, um, um, what we want to do is, is provide it for them because they're not finding the right sources. Anyways, uh, I'm just going to scroll through the code here. Uh, you could ask Claude at any time, like this is available for free anyways. So uh, it'll do it in different ways, but you can see that uh, it's just a basic input, uh, a button. And when you click it, uh, it will go to one of these, which is uh, a uh, fetch um, function. And then it sends the correct data, awaits the response, and then uh, then takes the inner text and throws it into, into the get element. So um, again, no doubt that this code works as soon as I switch this URL to the full endpoint. Um, and I hope I hope that was interesting because I think what I might do, what I'm certainly going to do is keep building it for a couple of projects that, that I need to do myself, but I might build on top of this because I haven't seen very many people keep uh, keep building this. Uh, one last thing uh, that we could do very quickly on screen here. Uh, can you change the upload file so that there is a drag and drop area as well? Also use Bootstrap 5 for styling. And this will hopefully make it uh, look pretty polished. Um, just because I hate clicking and, and trying to navigate, I love the drag and drop because I always have the window view open already. And so drag and drop. I'll just drag it in here. Uh, or alternatively, I could still choose a file and then use analyze 
uh, document. Uh, oddly enough, it didn't uh, really, it doesn't look very C uh, Bootstrap 5, but that's fine. All right, uh, we'll call it a day today, and we will come back um, next week with another project. So thanks for watching. See you next week. Bye.